Hello and welcome. Today we are going to look at the workflow for designing a surgical guide in the InLab Software 22. Uh, now it is worth mentioning that when you are designing a surgical guide in the InLab software or the CIRIC software, it is a, a guide referred to as a CIRIC guide. So it's either a CIRIC guide 2 or a CIRIC guide 3. So this is specific to a Densply Serona ecosystem, meaning that the file type needs to be something generated from our implant planning software known as Sedexis or the old software might be known as Galileo, so if you're still running that version. Um, but the type of file that we need is known as a cmg.dxd. So that's an implant planning file that comes from Sedexis. Um, if you do not have this, if you have something like a DICOM file, uh, apologies, it does not work in the InLab or CIRIC software. It does need to be part of the Densify Surrounding ecosystem for when you are actually um, obviously importing that planned uh, implant file. So when you're in the InLab 22 file, the first thing that you will notice is you will notice that you're in the order management window. So we can tell because it's highlighted here on the bottom left hand side of the screen. However, if I want to now import the cmg.dxd file because it already has part of the DXD attached to it. So obviously the scan of the, the patient from obviously the intraoral scanner side of things. Um, we already have a lot of data for you know the patient name and things like that. So we don't have to add a new case here or add a new order. We actually come up to the DS logo. We select import. When you select import, you can see under the different type of files. One is noted as cmg.dxd. OK, so if I come to the cmg.dxd file, obviously I can now see that I have one on my desktop here, so I'm going to select that file and select open. So now it's going to import this implant planning file into my software. Uh, now, the nice part about this workflow is that when you have an implant planning file, it already knows where the implant is placed. It already has a lot of valuable data coming from the Sedexa software. So here you can see in the administration, obviously the patient's name is already pre-populated from that DXD portion of the cmg.dxd. Uh, and then it already knows that we're doing a CIRIC guide and it already also knows what uh, tooth we're working on. So in this case, the 4.6. Now, when we come over to the side here, this is where we can select prime print. As soon as we select prime print, uh, it's automatically going to know that it's the Densply Serona uh, as the manufacturer and our prime print guide resin. OK, uh, now there are additional options if you wanted to mill it in your prime mill or mill it in something like your MCX5 or MCXL. You absolutely still can. But in today's workflow, we're going to show you how it works with the prime print. Uh, now the scan phase you'll see is grayed out um, and that's because the scan is already taken care of for us, of course. So at this point in time, we can move forward to the model phase of the software. So as soon as we come in here, the edit model step, just like in any other version of InLab or CIRIC, we have the ability to use the form tool to add, smooth or remove material. We have the cut tool available to us to trim anything away that we may not want to be a part of the guide. And we also have the replace tool available uh, should we need to fill in any small holes or anything like that. If there's nothing to do though, we can go ahead to set model axis. And again, this step we're very familiar with. We wanna use our left cursor first to pull this into the arch itself. And then we can go ahead on the right-hand side of the screen, or sorry, the left-hand side of the screen and move this model up or down accordingly. All right. Once you have your model axis set, we can move forward to the design. So again, much like in, you know, uh, the InLab uh, 20 or, or 19 version, it does a lot of the work for you. But if you want to change the thickness at all, um, you're more than welcome to. So you can change the thickness. The spacer is kind of preset to one that's pretty decent for the prime print. So I wouldn't necessarily say that you have to change anything there. Uh, and then where it comes to edits, uh, CIRIC guide, obviously the system's going to generate a guide for us, but we have the ability to change a couple items. OK, so right now we're getting that error message that's basically saying right now there's material that's impinging on the channel itself. So there's a couple things that we can do to just basically get rid of that uh, that red to make sure that our drills in the actual surgical portion of this uh, workflow for this patient uh, we take care of. Uh, however, I do want to just go through the tools from uh, start to finish. So the adapt seating area, uh, what we're able to do if we wanted to add material, for example, uh, we can add resin or uh, yeah, basically resin to these areas, or we can remove as well too. So if I use the remove tool, 
I can basically just come up and remove some of the area that it's going to adapt to, and then I can hit apply. So anything with orange, it's going to add um, additional scent to that area. If I wanted to make it smaller, I could, uh, and then anywhere that I highlighted with the remove tool and then hit apply, it removed material from that area. So looking at this channel here, uh, now what we can do is where the support geometry is. If I wanted to decrease the size of this channel, I can either come to the uh, right hand side and use that scroll button, or I can hold my left cursor and move my mouse down, and that also did the same. Now you'll notice that we still have that red in the channel itself, and that's because there is still material here technically impinging. So with the inspection window tool, I can basically create kind of a hole punch right here on the, in this case, the distal of the five. And then all that did was that created a little bit more space. OK, now if I wanted to do it on both sides, I could. However, technically I'm in the clear here. But again, just for symmetry, if I wanted to do it on both sides, I absolutely could. But then with the inspection window tool, I can also, of course, create further inspection windows. So if I wanted to create an inspection window here, again, just to see that it's fully adapted to the seat, I could. I can also increase or decrease the size of the window on the uh, right hand side here under the tool. OK, so I can now see from a visual perspective when it's inserted into the patient's mouth that this guide is fully seated, okay? So that's basically how you can edit the guide as you need to. Uh, and then in the finalized step, some key things that you can do. If you wanted to use the smooth tool to smooth anything uh, out, you absolutely can. If you needed to obviously use something like uh, the cut tool to uh, trim uh, any portion of the guide away, you absolutely can do that as well too. Um, now you're going to see here, obviously it's suggesting right now that we have some thin areas. You're always going to have some thin areas towards where the inspection windows are, towards the edges, that sort of thing. That's usually pretty normal. Um, I wouldn't say that you have to change anything here. But I do want to show you here if you do want to cut a portion out. So let's say I wanted to cut a little bit out from here on the distal of the seven. I guess the distal of the eight in this case. I absolutely could. So I can trim that portion away. And then if I feel I need to smooth anything, I can use then the form tool and smooth this edge. OK, so you have the ability to do anything you want here. In terms of finalizing it with the smooth and the cut tool. OK, so feel free to use this as needed. Um, and then when we move forward to the finalized phase, if you are using obviously the uh, prime print, um, you are able to export it directly to InLab Cam. You could also have selected the start job option. OK, so if you wanted to hit start job, you can identify that you want the job to start right away in the printer and basically getting it prepared in the cam software. Uh, it would just require, you know, a little bit of uh, confirmation and hitting start on the printer. However, I selected in uh, export to InLab Cam. So now when I open up my cam software, I can see here on my first uh, option here. This is the case that I just exported to myself. Uh, and again, it automatically knows that I can uh, move forward with the um, uh, prime print guide material. So then I can hit my fast forward option here on the bottom. I uh, might have been cut it a little bit from my screen there, but it looks basically like a fast forward button uh, that you would see on a remote, things like that. And what this does is this sets up the job automatically in what's called the optimized print setting. So what that means is it's going to print with the best quality, but as well two key things that we're going to note. It's never going to put in this case, if I hit support forbidden regions, this is super critical for a surgical guide, especially it's never going to place any of these supports inside the implant channel or on the intaglio surface because we do not want any of those supports actually um, you know inside uh, to affect the fit of this guide we need a, a really good fitting surgical guide to obviously you know keep up with the purpose of the surgical guide for you know the best possible results for our patient so then at this point if i was actually connected to the printer in this case i'm not actually connected to a printer i'd be able to hit start production uh, so that has been the workflow for a CIRIC guide in the InLab Software 22. Uh, and then we pushed it over to the CAM software and we used the fast forward option to move right into the produce stage. Uh, now, if we did want to go back into the arrange stage and maybe add an additional case, we absolutely could. Or, uh, if we wanted to print multiple guides, we can go back to the collect stage, add the additional guides that we need. 
Uh, or here in the arrange stage, we are able to go to restoration positioning to reposition this. However, I would recommend to always go with the optimum printing when it comes to printing a guide. Uh, so optimizing quality, of course, because obviously we do not want to, um, you know, uh, compromise any of the uh, quality of this uh, for the sake of the print. Uh, so that has been the workflow for printing uh, or getting a surgical guide ready for printing, I should say, uh, in InLab 22. Thank you so much and stay tuned for more videos.